today's video is all about prepping. Five things that you should purchase. And you should purchase these with cash, so therefore, you're not throwing any flags up. You're not bringing attention to yourself. Because I think all these things are good to have, but they tend to be things that some people want to ban. Some people want you not to have. If you are a prepper or someone who wants to live sustainable, these five things would be excellent to have. And I believe you need to purchase them this week with cash. Let's talk about it today. Hopefully this will help you say, you know what, I need this. Wait, I already have this, but here's another idea that that sparked. This is a good video for you. Let's jump into it today. Five things that you should be purchasing with cash this week. This video starts right now. Hey guys, welcome to The Max. Thank you so very much for being with us today. I'm humbled by you joining your afternoon or your morning with us today. I do ask that you give us a thumbs up if you like the content. It does help us share our message across this platform. Our goal is to do things that brings honor and glory, of course, to our God, but also to give you a common sense approach and a wise outlook on what's going on here in our world. And when we purchase things like this, it helps us say, you know what, we're gonna thrive and survive in a situation that could be, you know, if a crap hits the fan situation, I wanna be ready. Number one is a catch or cache. Some people call them different. I don't wanna say just cash because you may have a different understanding of what that is. I'm gonna show you the picture of the ones that I just purchased. Now, the purpose of this style is because it is a certain length to put something else in that the government is trying to ban right now. So I want you to look at this. I have a few of these I purchased. Now the purpose of these is to be able to put things up that you want to keep safe. You're not putting all your eggs in one basket. The purpose of the length and the size is because you want to put certain items in there. Now things that you need to look to put in there maybe some assets, some precious commodities, also something that involves uh, self-defense, this would be a good thing. We also put some freeze-dried food in there and we put some other assets that could bring value to us one day. So these are things that you could purposely bury on your property, purposely bury on a family's property. That way if something ever happens, you have a way that, um, you know, if something happens to your home, if you get ran out and you have to go somewhere, this would be a good item to have. Now, a lot of people say, that's crazy talk. No one believes that's gonna happen. Well, it may not, but it's like insurance. I don't wanna use auto insurance. I don't wanna use life insurance. I wanna use health insurance, but I have it because it gives me insurability and gives me kind of a, a way to feel a little bit okay about the situation if something were to happen. So having a cache, having preps are very good because it gives you that insurance. Number one, have a cash or cache. This would be what I would have. This is the one that I personally bought this week. Number two is books, not virtual books, but true old school books. I challenge you to look at old libraries, old bookstores, even some thrift stores. There's, a, there's an online site where you can look for thrift books. I would challenge you to look for a few things. I would buy a constitution, a easy constitution, like a pocket sized constitution. I'd also buy a Bible, a holy Bible that, that you can always have because I think some of these things that we're going to be talking about and some of the things that, that we talk about buying will be the things that they will ban first. If we bring knowledge and wisdom to ourselves, you become a threat to society in the movement of maybe regulation, maybe tyrannical views. I think it's good to have some wisdom and a constitution, a Bible would be good. Now, another thing, I'd look at a farmer's almanac. I would look at how to preserve food. I'd, I'd find a book on preservation, maybe a ball blue book on how to can food, maybe a foraging book. Nicole Pillion has some phenomenal books on foraging and herbal medicine. Those would be some good things that you could keep in your cache. But not only that, it would be good to have one day we may not have access to our phones and digitized forms of, of literature. So why don't we find some things that can help us understand by written old words and there's nothing better than a Bible and some of these how-to books. I challenge you to look at some kind of survival book, some kind of handbook. It would be very good to have. I know some people put some little Boyd Scout handbooks up. It teaches survival at a very ed low educational uh, level. I think that would be a great thing to have. Um, I, I think a historical book to talk about what's happened in our history because if we need to pass down our knowledge to our children because our schools are not doing it, it'd be good to have. So number two would be books 
written books, older books, and some books that can give you some basis and wisdom as we go through maybe tougher times. Number three, I talk about all the time, but it's precious metals. I buy precious metals just about every time I get an opportunity. Now, gold is expensive, but guess what? It's going to keep on going up. So if you can go in with someone, I'll be honest with you. I had two other people come to me and we bought uh, gold together. So we said, you know, we can't, burn, you know, you can, if you buy from a provider, you have to buy a certain amount, you know, five, 10, 15, $20,000. Well, no one's got that laying around unless you are uh, very blessed. And if you are, kudos to you, start buying some gold. But if you can't, maybe there's three or four of you that can put your money together and each buy an ounce or each buy a half ounce, or you co-op together and you put it together knowing that you can trust this person to make sure that you can grow as a family, as a community. If something were to happen, you work together and have preps together. It may be a family buy. It may be, hey, my mom and dad and my two siblings, we're gonna go in together and we're gonna co-op and buy together. This is a great opportunity to purchase precious metals because remember, when everybody else that's on the lower levels are buying crypto, it's all based on the grid, it's all speculative. But when the bigger governments, like the Chinese government, the Polish government, even your Fed are buying gold, it shows where the true wealth and money is, and that is in gold because it is a currency that is worldwide that cannot be controlled because you tangibly hold it. So I'm not looking at crypto. I'm not looking at some kind of speculative currency. I want to have the real thing. Gold is good. Silver is good. Make this purchase and work together. I know it's expensive. I'm not telling you that everybody can afford gold, but if you work together and you buy together with the family or you start picking up some silver, it's only going to be more beneficial for you. I think this is a very good purchase. My personal opinion is what I'm buying. Number four, this is probably one of the biggest. I want you to listen to me. I want you to go on social media. I want you to go to your local uh, market down the street, a local flea market, your local farm, and I want you to talk to a farmer and you build a relationship and you either buy a side of beef, a side of pig, or the whole steer, or the whole pig, or you buy some chickens, or you go to the Amish village and you build that relationship to buy meat. Now, I know that sounds crazy to you, but meat is one of those things that they're going to look to ban very, very soon. So I would challenge you to build that relationship with your farm. Now, I didn't buy meat this week because we own a farm. We have a sustainable farm. So this is just one thing that we have on farm. But if you have a rabbit farmer close, you have a chicken farmer close, you have a, a cattle farmer close or a pig farmer close, I want you to go talk to them and say, hey, I want to build a relationship with you. Remember, when you start buying local, people say, oh, it costs too much. It actually does not. You may pay a little bit more for your ground beef because it may cost you five or six or seven dollars a pound. However, your steaks are not 16 and 17 dollars. They're still five or six dollars a pound when you buy it by the whole animal or by the half of the animal. If you buy it that way, you're going to save money, but also you're building an independent way in a localized way to provide for your goods and for your food. So please, number four, buy some meat, talk to a local farmer. You're not only supporting him, so it's giving him sustainability, it's supporting you because now you're taking your food system local and that matters. And number five, the perfect time to buy seeds is right now. And you need to purchase these right now because guess what? It's fist to be garden season and everybody's fist to start buying them up. If you don't know how to grow gardens, that's okay. Learn. That's the whole point of those books that we talked about a while ago. Watch the how-tos. But you could pick up seeds for like a dollar or two a pack. Buy some organic or non-GMO or heirloom seeds. Get away from anything that has been sprayed or some kind of hybrid because guess what? When you buy that kind of stuff, you will not be able to grow it back. Learn how to harvest the seeds off of them. Learn how to make the crop for next year. It doesn't matter if you live in town, you can build a small raised bed. I've shown you how to build raised beds. I have tons of videos on how to grow edible landscapes and gardens, how you can do this even in a subdivision. You can grow in pots. We've talked about some of the things that you can grow in five gallon buckets on your balcony. Do not not grow food even if it's microgreens. Learn how to grow food to supplement your food system. This is the perfect time to buy because it's economic. This is something that you can learn. They even sell seed starter mixes, organic seed starter mixes at your local Walmart or at your local stores that can help you provide all the nutrients for that seed to start growing. Learn how to grow seeds because then you are learning how to grow food and you are becoming sustainable when a lot of people are not. 
don't require a grocery store don't require someone to do it for you you are not a little birdie sitting in a tree waiting on your mom to bring it that's what government is doing it wants to provide all those things for you so you can't get out of the nest and fly on your own and be sustainable don't do that don't be the one who believes the government's always going to be there to provide for you learn to purchase some things on your own meat seeds some of the best buys that you can buy this week all this stuff can be utilized by learning how to preserve it you can learn how to put it on your pantry for years and years and years we have tons of videos on that also you can learn to put some of your seeds up in your cache for later these are some good buys check some of these out find ways to grow there's links to some of the things that i buy and some of the things some of the providers i use in the description with seeds and with gold and things like that but just be smart do your research and find ways that you can buy these things try to buy them with cash or try to buy them and put them somewhere in a very inconspicuous place so that way you're always protected you're always sustainable and you have a prepping mentality you know what no matter what goes on it's gonna be a lot better because you have some things that could help you survive guys thank you for watching remember the ultimate prep the ultimate guidance and the ultimate wisdom that you can seek is always in christ I would be remiss to tell you to buy all this stuff and not lean on Christ. Find Christ first, and when you find Christ and you spiritually prep and you are prepared to go through, you won't fear, you'll have a common sense approach, and you'll learn wisdom by seeking what to buy, how to buy to take care of your family. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless. Happy homesteading, y'all.